Hey class, it's Nick. Uh, I got another tutorial for you. This time it's about uh, creating ramps in Rhino. Uh, this, these are for the production of your schematic drawings. Um, it's going to make it a lot easier to make those 2D drawings if you have a sense of how it works uh, in 3D. Uh, so what I've got here is a really simple plan. I've got like a floor plate um, with a ramp on it. You don't necessarily need uh, to actually limit yourself to this, but I'm using this for this example, you basically need to know where, where the ramp begins and ends and what its inside and outside uh, radius are. And I'm using this um, just as a simple kind of demonstration here. So I've got my plan drawing, and a lot of you guys, I think, have these in plan, uh, but, but don't necessarily know uh, how they operate in section. So you could import your plans and import your uh, floor plates in section, uh, and then make this whole process probably a lot easier for you. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and start with this with this drawing, and and then just and then just kind of make it from there. So um, I've got my I've got this uh, this de this plate. I actually don't have my section, so what I'm going to do is in front view, we we'll go ahead and copy that uh, so that th this would represent um, two floors. I got one floor, and then this this like upper floor uh, here. And then what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm also going to copy uh, this this shape. Um, from this position, turn off the center snapper, to uh, this position uh, here. And what I'm going to do is, what you need to know is, you need to know where the uh, where the ramp starts and ends. So, um, which I'm going to copy this one as well. I just realized I didn't need that. Okay, so, you know, where, if there's a line here, you know, where, where the ramp starts, like maybe, maybe you enter here and the ramp, you know, sends you to here, okay? Like where the ramp actually you know, starts starts to add to that uh, to that like floor plate um, is really important. So I'm actually going to go ahead and draw these quad snaps here. I'm going to draw the beginning line for that piece, and I'm going to draw um, the end line uh, for that piece up here. So I've got this curve and that curve, and then I'm going to go ahead and use the helix command to draw the shape. The axis is like how big it is, so I'm going to go from midpoint to midpoint, okay? And then I, my, my thing says radius and start point, so the radius is is the outside edge, okay? And the start point is, is, where, it, uh, is where it starts. Um, and you can see, oh, and I've actually got the number of turns. Um, you, can have, you can have any number, you can have 0.5, you can have 1, you can have 2. Let's do a full turn. Let's do 1, so I just set turns to 1. You can do that by clicking on it and see one. Um, you can see, like, you can see where my mouse is. So it starts at the top. So if I put my mouse on the edge of this line here that I want, it's going to do a full turn um, all the way to the bottom. Actually, it looks like uh, that's not quite what I what I need to make that work. I need like one. I need like 0.75 turns. Is that going to be right? Yeah, 0.75 turns will actually give it to me, you know, here. So that's actually really nice to have those two lines there, so we know we actually know how many turns we need to actually actually finish that. You could also do it. Uh, you could do. Uh, you could double that, and I could do one and a half turns. Once I know my proportion, basically it's like the different times around the clock. I want to go from, you know, if I'm looking here, six o'clock to three o'clock. I have to go 75% of a circle, so that makes sense, 0.75. So if I do 1.5, that's two turns around, which might give me my, um, you know, 1 to 12, uh, you know, pitch, which is good for ADA. You can kind of measure that, you know. So, um, so let's just do it. I keep messing with this. Okay, so I'm going to start here, and I get a curve. Okay, now I can go ahead and I can delete, or I can hide these um, if I want to. And... Um, I actually don't need these uh, outer circles either. That's just to give me a sense of the uh, where it, where it ends and where it begins. I'm actually going to go ahead and hide this as well. And this. Oops. All right, I seem to have messed up uh, something here. Let's see here. Uh, I don't have, didn't have enough turns there. Oh, okay. Let's try that again here. Felix. Maybe get my math wrong. <laughs> that never happens. Um, that was one. Let's see. Maybe I need to do 1.75. Maybe I, um, maybe. Oh, because it's one time around the clock plus 75. Yeah, yeah. That was all that was. Okay, so disregard what I said before. <laughs> okay. There we 
we got it. Now we're going to do a, a sweep one. This is a one uh, rail sweep. It's a really powerful command here. So we take the rail, which is the spine, and we're going to select the cross section curves, which are these end pieces here. And what this does is it sweeps these forms um, along that. Uh, it's, it's important to have a start and an end because you're, you're, you're like telling the computer basically that that's the form you want. When we press enter, uh, I'm going to use a free form. Let's take a look at the shaded view here. It looks pretty darn good, actually. You can see, uh, let me get this out of the way. You can see what that's doing. Creating a gentle kind of sweep. Other ones you could do, you could do a uh, simple sweep, which actually in this case isn't going to really matter. Um, so this is fine. We can just say, okay. We're good to go. Um, if you wanted to make that into a solid, what you could do is just copy everything some distance, you know, and you, you'd know exactly what this is. Like if it's if it's a two foot thickness or if it's a, a, a you know, one foot or whatever, and then just take both of these curves from that you copied and uh, loft them together. And it should more or less give you Oh, except I need to do all the curves. Hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we'll just do this. We'll do uh, bound uh, duplicate border. My bad. Duplicate border. And then we'll explode those. And then we can go ahead and um, just grab all these together and loft them. And then that'll give you a nice, uh, when you cut these things, they'll actually... Uh, give you a nice section. Okay, so you do that for all the sides and they give you a saw. Um, if I turn on my floor plates, you know, again, if I did the same thing, just extrude these. Solid, yes, fine. Pretty good. And then this one we'd have to, uh, you, you probably, yeah, this is probably going to go into the floor. So, fair enough. And there you go. So that actually starts, you know, there, and it winds up, and then gives us a nice room. Now I gotta watch your head height here, obviously. So a lot to pay attention to when we design ramps, right? We are looking at that ADA pitch of one to twelve, um, and we're looking basically so that you've got enough head height here. It should be it should be an eight foot head height. So we probably have to cut something out here if this were the design that we were going with, um, in order to get us up to that next level. Okay. So that's basically uh, how, how that kind of ramp works. I'm going to go ahead and kill those. And uh, another uh, another piece here. So I'm just going to draw this really quickly. So another, your, your basic ramp, uh, just to go over this technique here, do a perpendicular intersect. Okay, let's just do this. <laughs> Basic ramp is going to be, let's just do like a switchback. So we're going to go up, landing, and then up to the next level. Okay, pretty simple. Um, split. Split with this. And then I'm going to do the same thing here. Okay, so I've got these two things. Um, and then um, let's go to multi view here. So I could take. I split you. Let's do that again. Yeah, that worked. Okay, split. There we go. Okay. So take this one. Let's say it's the bottom. And again, you'd have this. You'd have this in elevation or something or in uh, section. I'm gonna move it down. And take this one and move it, you know, up. So. If we look at this thing in 3D, <clears throat> this is the bottom where the ramp starts, and then the the middle level is this kind of landing here, uh, and then the top one would be this. Um, and you know, basically, you don't have to do, you don't have to do a sweep, but um, you could if you wanted to. So I'm just connecting the lines here. And you can see them playing. You can see what this looks like. Um, 
lots of ways to do this. I mean, you could do a sweep, I guess. But, um, I delete those, I get rid of my lines, I don't want to do that. So let's go ahead and let's, let's do a uh, surface from four points, you can do that. So one, two, three, four for the platform, and then I don't need these anymore. So you can see already I've got basically the outlines of it. So I took that two-dimensional drawing and cut it up and moved those to the positions that they needed to be in. And once I've got the lines, I can do a lot of things. I could do I could do um, like a four-point uh, surface like I just did here. I could also do uh, a loft, <coughs> between those two uh, sections. That's easy to do. And then lastly, I could do a uh, sweep if I wanted to. Um, I could take this rail. Oops. Actually, take it back. Take this rail and this section. And in this case, because it's really easy, I can sweep it. And, uh, you know... And then basically I can do the same thing that I did last time. Um, if I duplicate the boundaries, move them, and then like loft them, um, that's actually going to give me that that ramp. Um, so anyway, two uh, kind of simple techniques for uh, doing doing ramps in 3D. Um, it it helps if you have some idea again of where the different like floor plates are. So I think importing your drawings is going to help. Um, and then you know of course once you've got these things uh, created, you can go ahead and use the contour tool um, to uh, actually find the lines in these you know it might sometimes it's easy because you can see them in the view but um, for more complicated forms you're going to want to go ahead and do um, a contour to create a section across it okay um, so the techniques again so so basically just basically you just want to locate those points in 3d space um, form a cage with lines and then use the uh, the surface from three or four corner points, lofting or sweeping uh, to create those surfaces that you need. And uh, again, watch the head height, uh, watch ADA, and uh, that'll be it. All right, if you have any questions, uh, let me know. Good luck.